Dr. Gallo, good morning. What is the single thing you would like to tell people that they're not getting in the media frenzy? Oh, that's at the, at the core of this, that there's going to be some, you know, everything that's found is, is, a, is a piece of evidence. And, uh, you know, the, the tough part up until now has been sorting out what's real evidence and what's been self-generated and then echoed by media back and forth. So I think now we've got onto something that may honestly, honestly be a, a piece of evidence that lasts for more than a day before it's discarded. So we'll see what this turns out to be. Is, is an ocean just another ocean, or is there something unique of the deep southern Indian Ocean on the way to Antarctica? Yeah, it's well, one of the waters there, a bit further south, can be some of the roughest on Earth, but uh, they're a little bit north of that. The, the seafloor terrain beneath all this is about, uh, it starts at about a mile and a half, goes down to about three miles, but we're very familiar with that kind of terrain. It's like a volcano, a uh, long volcanic terrain. So it's, it's uh, you know, we know that kind of terrain. We know how to work that kind of terrain. And we're not the only ones. Other, other laboratories around the Earth do too, and that's kind of uh, encouraging. So if the plane is there, uh, we know how to search for it. Gotcha. We, it did appear as if we had a breakthrough with those satellite imagery, but the U.S. and Australian planes returned having spotted nothing. What does that mean to you? Is that well, significant? Well, you know, yeah, no, no, no. As Tom said earlier, you know, it's a long way from uh, Perth, and it's, a, it's an awfully big ocean for even big pieces to be found. So it's just a matter of time and, and good weather. We need some luck, uh, and, uh, you know, we need the weather to break, and, I, and th those pieces will turn up whatever they are. David, you led the expedition to locate the Air France jet. What did you learn from that, and what should investigators and rescuers look to avoid doing this time around? Sure, I, I was a co-leader on that. It was a huge program, international program. Uh, you know, it, it was very methodical. We had to go through certain steps of mm -hmm. one, getting the last known position, two, backtracking the data, the, uh, the uh, debris that was on the ocean surface to find X marks the spot, three, drawing a circle around that X so we knew... Uh, that the plane was right. somewhere inside there, and, and then and then mapping the seafloor. Dr. Gallo, I don't want to get into the classified work that you do at Woods Hole, but I'm curious about the Boeing Poseidon aircraft and also its joint work with our submarines. How important are submarines to this search? Uh, you know, I well, uh, they could be very important in terms of learning for the uh, listening for the finger on the black boxes if they're in the water. Uh, mm -hmm. The French had their submarine involved in the Air France 447 search, but they never heard the pinger at all. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things. If you're, if you're relying on sound in the ocean, the, the ocean can play funny games with sound. So uh, it could be very important.